So this is the hot take, the final segment of the podcast where I go online, find out a take that could be controversial and we discuss it. And yeah, create controversy in the comment section. So this week I've been looking for hot takes regarding Dragon Ball Super Superhero, the new film. So spoilers ahead, of course. If you haven't already seen the title, then that's enough of a spoiler. But we're going to get into it. So I will say again, these are not our takes. These are takes I found online. So that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> people will comment before getting 20 seconds into the video. But anyway, <laughs> if you're not one of those people, then listen up. So, uh, all right. The take this week. Some random person online has said, Dr. Hedo should have resurrected Android 16, a.k.a. Gevo, instead of Maxell. He is his uncle, after all. Uh, Android 16 could have short-circuited, causing him to turn bad, but also still interacts with Gohan instead of being a screeching monster. Because, of course, Android 16 and Gohan have some sort of, you know, history, I guess. Um, and, yeah, a bad Android 16. Coming back, uber-powerful. That would be an interesting family bond with Dr. Hedo as well. So, yeah. What do you think? I guess having 16 back instead of Cell as the main big bad? Interesting concept. Mm. Um, I mean, did he even know uh, 16 no, at all? Um, I, mean, I don't know. but about Dr. Jiro, like at all. Yeah, he wasn't really interested in Dr. Jiro, but he might have known. He, they could have changed the plot slightly so that he it was like, oh, well, I knew about my uncle who was this incredible soldier in the army. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, they didn't really give us anything on... Um, what's 16's real name? Sorry? Uh, Gevo. Gevo. We never really knew anything about him. I think Team 4 Star gave us more about him than actually... Like, they made up, obviously, it's not canon in any way. Mm. They gave us more of a story about him than Z actually did. Mm. Like, we didn't really get a background at all. Then. We didn't in the anime, but I think in the manga it is hinted at that he is in the army and he is, well, people already knew that he was the son of Dr. Jiro. Yeah, but obviously superheroes, the anime, isn't it? Yeah. Or it's the anime, it doesn't mm -hmm. link to the manga. Hmm. Um, so they yeah. finally confirmed, confirmed that uh, in the actual anime now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we didn't. So from an anime perspective, we don't know anything about him at all. Hmm. So I suppose, I suppose that means at the same time, we can say what we want about him. Yeah, exactly. And they could have changed the backstory. They could have said that uh, as a kid, since we don't know who Dr. Hedo's parents are because they had the question marks, they could have said that. Uh, anything like oh he never lived with his parents growing up he was living with his uncle that type of thing so then they could have formed some sort of bond you know and that might have been the reason why Hedo wanted to bring him back is if he since he knows about the cell games he would have known that 16 was a person and around um so he must have thought yeah they turned this uncle that i loved into this monster who was out to kill and now I want to bring him back again because I loved him as a kid, that type of thing. I want to make him good again. I just want to be back with my uncle again, pretty much. And then something goes wrong and he turns yeah. uber evil. They could have said like his parents were like that abusive, so he, he always ran away to his uncle instead or something mm. like that. So, like, yeah. Something like that. Like mm -hmm. that's why he's a bit of a... That's why he's a bit weird. That's why he's mm. upset with superheroes because his uncle always used to. His uncle, who was in the army, mm. who was a super soldier, was always someone who looked after him. So he always got obsessed with like, like the big, good, strong guys. Mm. Guys, yeah. So he saw his uncle as a superhero. Yeah, and that's why he became obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a far reach. Yeah, um, yeah, um, and it could make. It could make Gohan reluctant to fight him. Yeah, especially if 16 does have his memory somehow. I, I don't know how he would get his memories, to be honest. Um, but if he kind of remembers Gohan, even if he kind of blames Gohan for him dying, like, look, I was trying everything to defeat Cell. If you just did, if you just, you know, finished him off when you could have, I wouldn't be dead. 
that type of thing. I don't know. Or some reason to get angry at him and snap, that type of thing. Um, because it was ultimately 16 who his death caused Gohan to defeat Cell. So uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. The, that was the final straw for Gohan, 16's death. Yeah, so 16 coming back and him being the one that Gohan needs to kill this time. It would have been an interesting little twist. And it would have been nice to see 16 back, I guess. He was more interesting than, I don't know, this raging monster that they've brought out here, this Max Cell who doesn't speak. I mean, Max Cell was the trashest final villain ever. Yeah. It was a horrible choice. Yeah. I love Superhero. I enjoyed the film immensely. Yeah. Like, it was a great film. Don't get me wrong, but the final villain was trash. <laughs> mm. They could have even, like, if they did bring 16 back and made him uber powerful, like, same level as Max Cell, they need their entire team to take him out. But, even if they manage to somehow defeat him without killing him and then change him good and then reunite him with Android 18, who was there in the battle, you know, that would have been interesting. It maybe would have given Android 18 a bigger part because, you know, she would have been like, oh, this was my brother. Well, not brother, but like, you know, this was my very close friend who I was with for years. And, well, Robo. Well, yeah, yeah, my Robo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's back trying to snap him out of it, that type of thing, because she knows he was one of the good ones. Um, so yeah that would have been more interesting give 18 a bit of a spotlight as well that would be interesting to see and then the end of the film maybe even bring back 17 just for the end just like to reintroduce 16 to 17 again and be like hey I'm back that type of thing that would be an interesting yeah. yeah bring 16 back into the fold I wouldn't be against it no we, we've talked about bringing 16 back in the past mm. like It'd be nice to have someone, another pacifist esque character. Especially if they did make him this insanely powerful beast as well. And they'd be like, okay, 16 is the powerful android of the three now. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no reason for him not to be because there's somebody who can make them stronger. Because 18 mm. doesn't, doesn't want that life. She no. does want a life of peace. Mm. 17 wants to be Park Ranger. Mm. So kind of it, it wants the same, wants a life of peace. Mm -hmm. And Hedo can offer strength to any of them at any point. Mm. Hedo would have made a strong 16 outright. Of course, yeah. Ed Hedo would have been made by the Red Ribbon Army to have made 16 stronger than the Gammas. Mm. So, because it would have been the main villain. So, it would make sense that for 16 to be stronger than 17 and 18. Yeah, I mean, I guess even in Z, 16 did kind of seem like the stronger one of the three. Yeah, like, yes, he died. In fought Cell. Yeah, like, yeah he, he was the one that died out of the three, but also he seemed arguably stronger than both of them. Um, 16 so I, beats base Cell, 17 and 18 couldn't do that. Yeah. So it's like if he came back and he was stronger than 17 and 18 again, but this time with an even bigger power bump. Well, I mean, 17 had that power bump anyway out of nowhere. He's insanely strong now. So mm -hmm. if 16's even stronger than him, I wouldn't be against it. And it would kind of make sense. Um, it is just another character that they kind of need to fit in now that might not be doing too much. But, you know, they could make it so that he's... I don't know, maybe just staying with 17, keeping 17 out of trouble, them two living together out in the wilderness, uh, protecting animals, since you, you got that glimpse of 16 kind of wanting to protect wildlife anyway. They could I mean, you make a together. joke about them liking birds, 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 and all that in, in yeah. nature, in Team 4 Star, but mm. that character did exist mm. in Z. Yeah. Like, obviously, all those shots of him playing with birds and wildlife and stuff like that he was interested team four, team four star didn't draw that mm. they existed in the show yeah he and wanted that's where team four star got it from yeah he wanted to protect life he was just programmed to kill goku and that was his sole focus apart from that he didn't want to destroy anything yeah so like he is actually like so that is with well within his yeah that mm. like he will probably would go live with 17 once he gets got his mind back or whatever mm. from if Gohan didn't have to kill him, but yeah. he might have to. Mm. 
like that's the thing he might have still had to kill him and might not wanted to hmm. but because he's the final villain of the film he probably would have had to anyway yeah and, potentially i mean that that could be a whole that could be the emotional crescendo of the film though like hmm. like gohan getting very upset um he, he still has to trigger into his form and everything like that and he still gets very upset that he starts having flashbacks and everything of back to the cell games and as he does like the final special beam cannon to take out 16 evil 16 like you see him getting very upset and he's because like i said and like you'll see if you've if and when you see the film like obviously apologies if you haven't but you've probably heard <laughs> oh, we said spoiler spoiled. word at the start yeah <laughs> you'll have probably said everything spoiled if you haven't seen it gohan enjoys it when he snaps mm. he smiles it's creepy like he <laughs> loves it when he snaps mm. um and the thing is like it could be the fact that as he realizes he's having to kill 16 it could be what pulls him back um and you could see him literally getting upset as he does the killing blow mm. it could be like part of what the emotional impact of the film is mm -hmm. because they're the sort of things that matter in these films yeah um rather than him just basically doing what he did because whilst it was very interesting and i really enjoyed the fact of him taking out um max cell with the special beam cannon and it was very interesting it was very i enjoyed it, it was very hype all that and it did have meaning in linking to piccolo mm. basically he was just flexing a lot as he killed him like he was like when he got punched by cell he was just like is that all you've got like he was just he was to a point just flexing on him yeah 100 um, like having an emotional connection instead probably would have meant more yeah it was like I... the end of the cell games when it was like you had goku behind him mm. like, talking to him um like he could actually like the, their emotional moments and they're the things that you remember um rather than Gohan like flexing while he was having his beam battle and stuff it's like yeah I think what could have even worked as an emotional trigger is if 16 was almost killing 18 because Krillin's also there and if Krillin's jumping in trying to save 18 and he's also not doing a thing pretty much he's just getting battered and then Krillin's basically pleading with Gohan saying like you need a help like imagine if this was Videl that type of thing like please she's my wife please save her that type of thing begging him then you know you could add Gohan almost picturing Videl in that position that 18's in getting destroyed um begging for help and then yeah that could have been the trigger point potentially yeah who knows I think the thing is like having roaring bad guys don't work in my opinion. Nah, they're, they're just not as thing. good. I think you don't need Hurudagon. Hurudagon is like Hurudagon is what, 20, 20 years old now? Probably, yeah. Film. Like, it's just, it's Hurudagon even, was fine for that film just because he wasn't even in the film for long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and it's just, it was the least interesting part of the film. Hmm. It was literally it. It was, Hurudagon was cannon fodder for the Dragon Fist. Yeah. And literally, it is exactly the same principle here. Mm. Maxell was cannon fodder for his tra for Gohan's transformation. Mm. That is it. It is pointless. Yeah. It just didn't need to be. The fight beforehand with the Gammas was better. That was an interesting fight. Yeah. The dialogue. You had them trying to convince him that they were good guys. There was a good fight going on. It was interesting. You had your transformation going on in between for Piccolo. Mm. It was engagement. You even had the pan stuff going on, which was not, which was yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. Like there was plenty stuff going on all at once, and that was good. Mm -hmm. Like there was a lot of stuff was happening with this. You were just, you knew the transformation was going to happen. You were just waiting for it. Yeah, that was it. But it's almost a shame because Cell Max. As soon as they even mentioned Cell Max or Max Cell. Um, and then he was revealed as well, finally. You knew, like, this is a character that's not going to stick around. This is somewhat, like, because if you think about it, all the Dragon Ball Super films, first one, Battle of Gods, you knew 
Beerus is going to stick around as a character. You'd, like Beerus wasn't ever going to die in that film. And we knew that from the moment he was introduced. We knew like, oh, this is going to be a guy that sticks around. Same with Whis. In Resurrection it, F. It's so iconic. Like, yeah. Yeah. In Resurrection F, they brought Freezer back for the first time. And it's like, oh, okay, this potentially might die. And he kind of did, I guess. <laughs> but they did still bring him back. With uh, Broly. We knew Broly's not going to die. As soon as the Broly film was re- like revealed, like, oh, we're making a Broly film. No trailers, no nothing. Just the title, Broly. And I was like, oh, Broly's back. He's not dying this time around. He is going to be a character that sticks around. And he did. Sal Max, it's like, yeah, no, he's not staying around. Like, this is going to be a one and done villain. And he's going to pop up. He's going to be gone again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the thing is, we all wanted what every single fan wanted was the rematch yeah which everyone didn't happen. wanted the rematch yeah cell coming back and basically going so you thought i was done yeah <laughs> and it, it would be the true but it would be the true real match it wouldn't be the the resurrection f1 mm. where it was like uh like i'm back and i'm freezer and Gur and i got absolutely like <laughs> absolutely ruined by mm. two Saiyans who magically have a new form out of nowhere mm. no it would be like <laughs> something serious and it would be and it would be well done because it's Cell so, and it's yeah. Gohan and it would and we we would feel like they'd learn from their mistakes Yeah, and we'd have something real is it almost that they had the idea they're like oh Cell versus Gohan rematch everyone will love this and then they realize they've got to fit it all into a film. And they're like, oh, there's just too much going on. Hey, we can't make Cell a viable bad guy while Soul Street introducing all these new characters. There's just not enough time. And they thought, well, I still like the idea of bringing Cell back. But let's just change them up and see how people react. It's still Cell versus Gohan. But it was all underwhelming because people were expecting so much more. That's kind of the idea I got from it. I think they back themselves into a corner by teasing them. Yeah. It's should just not use them. Nah. Which is why I'm more than fine with this hot take where they could have replaced them with 16. Um, because again, yeah, they would have to change up quite a lot of the film because, you know, Max Cell was only really in the last maybe 15 minutes for one fight and that's it. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, he wasn't in it at all. He was like, we seen him in the pod, but that was it. He didn't do anything. If 16 was a main villain for this film, they would have to bring him in a lot earlier to make him actually do stuff. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Yeah, Um, yeah, so the the whole second half of the film would have to change. But, yeah. Because the thing is, like, even if they reintroduced him and Gohan removed him very quickly, Mm. Cell wouldn't, like, the rematch against Cell is not the focus of the film. Mm. So it doesn't matter if Gohan does dispatch him quite quickly because it sell rematch hasn't been the main focus of the film at mm. all yeah the gammas have been yeah and everything like that superhero has been the main focus of the film with the underlying threat of cell mm-hmm. so it's not a big deal exactly Rich. whereas resurrection f was the entirety of the film of thought free <laughs> getting battered so that's why people were so angry about it mm. Whereas Cell coming back and it's just like, right, I am this underlying threat. You thought I was gone. And it's just like, and then he transformed and it's like, no, I can't have this happen again. I won't allow it to happen the way it went down last time. Okay. Yeah. Because they did so I many callbacks just... in the film as is. Like everything was a callback to previous stuff with OG. And even in the Cell arc, like, you know, with Gohan, you know, people kind of thought, okay, it's again sell the final move. Maybe they're gonna do another Kamehameha end, and that was the whole tease. Like you mm-hmm. defeated Cell one time doing that, do it again, and then he switched it up. It's all throwbacks, and it's like it just didn't quite hit the same because it's not the same Cell, and it's like a completely different villain. Well, it is a different villain. They just look similar, which it doesn't hit the same. It's it's not. Cell, it's semi perfect robot because mm. he's not even he's not even cell he's a robot yeah he doesn't regenerate or anything like that it's just 
Oh, we compl- we complained about the sale too many times. We have. This is we more towards really. sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he just he's terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think as a replacement, sixteen would have been good. Mm. But I think personally, I think they would have had to kill him. Yeah, they probably would have. But I mean, in, either way, I wouldn't got, mind it. You've got the gammas, mm. so to have another person, I think, I think you would have had to kill him, and you could have used it as an emotional plot point, and I think it would have worked. Yeah, I think it could have. But well. even if he did survive, like realistically, we're not going to see him much. We're realistically not going to see seventeen much going forward. He's just going to disappear back into the wilderness again. So if, if they were to bring back like 16 to live with 17, we're probably never, never really going to see them, both of them much, to be honest. Um, so I would have been fine if they did bring him back and let him survive. But yeah, even if he did die, not a big deal. It would have been nice to see him, nice to have some actual interactions with Gohan. They would have had to change up the full second act like completely to bring him in earlier to have these interactions. Um, but yeah they could have sped up some of the start of the film there was a lot of explaining who the Red Ribbon Army are at the start a lot of Piccolo exploring um, they could have sped that up a bit which don't get me wrong love the film as is but if they were to introduce 16 as a main villain and him having some actual impact they would have had to speed that up a bit I wouldn't mind getting rid of a little bit of the Red Ribbon filler mm. I love I love my I love all the um, Piccolo filler stuff I'm hmm. happy with that. Um, red ribbon filler. I'm happy to cut that down. Yeah, the full first ten fifteen minutes of the film was them in a car, just explaining who the red ribbon army are, what they're all about, and it's like, okay, I get it. This this is going on a bit long though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's just okay. You've you've convinced them. Like, cool, yeah, cool beans, right? Yeah. Um, like, can can we go on? Can we go now? But like everything else was great. Um, mm. Like I thought everything flowed quite well in terms of then Piccolo going to like see Dende and mm-hmm. Bulmer and everything like that. I thought that all flowed relatively well. Like he didn't hang about too much. Mm-hmm. Um, like he stayed where he needed to be. Like when he went to get the Dragon Balls, he pretty much had them. He summoned mm-hmm. the Dragon straight away. It all happened pretty quickly. That was fine. Um, like. All that happened quite well, but like, yeah, the red ribbon stuff in the car and everything like that. We spent so long in our car. Like, geez. Yeah, like, like, we didn't even get reintroduced to any of the characters we know until like 20 minutes in. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, these are all just new characters and we're focusing on them for the full first 15 minutes of the film. Like, all right. The, like, the introduction, like, we got told the entire Dragon Ball plot. Story. Yeah. yeah, plot from OG. To the tournament of power, so very well done. I'd like to point out. Oh, I love that animation. Really well that. Yeah, in what ninety seconds or something like that. Yeah, two minutes at most. Yeah, that was, was so well done. And then we're stuck in a car for 10, 10 15 minutes. Hmm. Like, pacing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I understand. You introduce new characters and give them some sort of backstory, but does it really need to go on this long? Yeah. yeah, they could have shortened that bit down. But uh, we've got way off topic anyway. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. But that, that's that's probably where they could have introduced him. Um, yeah. But no, I agree. This is the sort of villain that could have replaced yeah. uh, Cell quite well. Yeah. So this um, is not that I wanted that kind of engagement with your main characters because I don't really think there is, even though like we've, like it's been pointed out, it's a Piccolo film. Hmm. But the final transformation does belong to Gohan. Yeah. Just like the final kill belongs to Gohan. Mm-hmm. So really, the final villain needs to belong to Gohan. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it, there isn't really anybody for Piccolo like that. Mm. So, no, not really. So, yeah, it would, it would have to be someone like this. And I don't think there is anybody other than really someone like 16 or... Mm final perfect cell yeah really. so I, I think we're both in agreement there we're fine with this yeah. take yeah agree with it 16 would have been a good ultimate villain 